Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 13 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. We're not superstitious. We didn't skip 13. We didn't. Uh, a lot of buildings here in New York don't have a 13th floor. Yep. Uh, which is weird. But we're doing 13. We're going in. Yeah. I. Uh, and here's the thing about buildings that don't have a 13th floor. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. You have yeah. one. Right. And it's probably still just as unlucky, so at least tell me. <laughs> right? Yeah, you could be walking around on 14. Yeah. Have a brick fall on your head, and you thought you were safe. Yep. You were on so 13. Let your guard down. You guys are all dicks. Irresponsible. Yep. Irresponsible citizens. So um, a couple things from last week. Um, I went in, ahead and listened to One Night a Day. We talked about that Garth Brooks song really pretty really it's really, really pretty. pretty right yeah it does it, give you i think i said uh it's like if billy joel had a good voice yeah <laughs> it's interesting too because it occurred to me when i'm listening to it what do you think about billy joel doing sort of uh inspired style things from other people and then garth brooks doing that it's also always interesting in the Billy Joel song, which we'll talk about one in a minute. That's clearly a Jackie Wilson inspired ditty mm -hmm. that um, he'll do a Jackie Wilson inspired ditty. But a lot of, of course, a lot of Billy Joel, of course, is going to seep through. And I thought the same thing with the Garth Brooks song. I thought, yeah, for sure. I can see this. But this is Garth Brooks. Very much so. Yeah. And he can't not sing country style. Yeah. Which uh, was the downfall of Chris Gaines. <laughs> the yeah. whole Chris Gaines experiment was he was supposed to be a rock and roll guy, but he still did the twangs. Yeah. And the vocal hiccups and all the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> couldn't uh, stop. I, I might be... I, I think we might have mentioned this, but I think I'm kind of alone in that when he did the Chris Gaines thing, I thought that was awesome. And then I was like, oh, I guess everybody else hates it, huh? <laughs> yeah i think uh it, <laughs> i didn't hate the idea like oh yeah just i mean obviously it's not the first one to do it yeah uh, you just make up a character and do an album in that i'm like okay great um but i think you know what killed it for me is he grew the little soul patch i was like this is my <laughs> country fried idea of what a rock and roll guy is yeah the guy with a little soul patch. <laughs> like, well, and he had uh, bangs, right? He had weird bangs. Chris Gaines had bangs, yeah. Yeah, and he was, you know, he's still kind of fat, which is fine. I guess he can be a fat rock and roll guy, but yeah. <laughs> just was like, all right, you didn't try real hard. Yeah. It's funny, too, because now it occurs to me that one of the flaws with the Chris Gaines theory was that Chris Gaines' character was he's a rocker we've never heard of. He's a new rocker. Right. But he looks like an old rocker because he's an old <laughs> fat guy. Ah, oh, that never occurred to me. Yeah. That's a problem. And then uh, the name was a problem because it just sounds like a different country guy. Oh, and true. <laughs> Chris Gaines. All right. I mean, you'd, he didn't go full rock and roll with like some made up name from like Nordic culture, Nordic mythology right. or something. It just was like, oh, I'll just be like a different guy in the same town who doesn't have a hat. <laughs> there we go. Hey, is that uh, Garth Brooks? No, you don't have a hat. Yeah, that's true. That, that, that's Chris Gaines. <laughs> His cousin Chris, probably. That's funny. <laughs> well, God bless. I, you know, it's so hard to hate somebody for a little experiment yeah you're trying to do a thing trying to do a thing let the guy do a thing and i do know i remember at the time people were irritated that he tried so hard to be like no no i'm not chris gaines and like no you're not gonna be able to do that part of it <laughs> no no you have a pretty unique physical appearance yeah just go like yeah i'm doing a little experiment yeah. Yeah, it was just seemed like half thought out. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are gonna find out if it's you, dude. I wonder if he ever thinks 
because it would be pretty funny to put out a new album by Chris Gaines now. It really would. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be great. Oh, my God. And what he should do is he should say, I went back in the studio and he asked Chris Gaines and I did a couple new songs and then I covered some of my favorite songs by heart. And, <laughs> yeah. And so it's well, got yeah. unnecessary covers. <laughs> like sketches. Yeah. <laughs> like little sketches and stuff. And if you really wanted to commit, Garth Brooks is doing fine financially. But Chris Gaines should do like casinos. Oh, yeah. Casinos and like BB Kings. <laughs> yes. And wow. his poster, this is like my quibble with like, if you ever go see a classic rocker at a casino. Yeah. They'll have a picture. Like if you go see Frankie Valley in the four seasons, it'll have a picture of Frankie Valley from when he was young. And you know, that's not who's going to walk out on stage. Right. There you it's they're setting themselves up yeah it's like uh putting up a tinder picture that's five years old yes i uh well I was, you can only disappoint now yeah i was doing a casino and kenny rogers was going to be there a month later and his poster was there and god bless him it was the most current photo great and it looked like a ad for like dentures <laughs> Perfect. It was pretty awesome because what the, why would he care? He's no. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Nobody who's going there cares. They're already at a casino. Yep. They don't love their lives. No, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, Great. you're. Ah, the guy from the poster. Yeah, the, that'll, and he, maybe he was doing the reverse trick because he looked like crap in the poster. So maybe when he came out, they were like, oh, he looks all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got more color in his face. Great. Yeah, he's I oh, he, he put in the rest of his teeth. <laughs> but great. then he also did stuff from the new album. <laughs> Everybody got mad. <laughs> <laughs> so the song we I picked this week is uh Easy Money, uh produced by I believe Phil Silvers, if I'm remembering. <laughs> it was produced by the Philistines. Yeah, it was produced by <laughs> 600 AD. <laughs> yeah. It's an old, old song. An old song. You guys, you have to see every episode or you won't get these jokes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's from the album An Innocent Man, and it's his 50s, 60s uh, collage uh, yep. ode to music. He did. And last week, I said this was an attempt that was a failure, kind of. Mm -hmm. I think I was mistaken, at least partly. He wants it to sound, I think, like a Jackie Wilson song. Okay. And I think it kind of does, at least musically. Yes. I don't think it's super complicated musically. Yeah. It definitely sounds like 55 other songs from the from that actual era from yeah. the 60s. Um, where, you know, a lot of stuff sounded similar. Yeah. <laughs> it was rock and roll was just getting going yeah and a lot of things sounded real similar uh and this sounds like you could slip right in yeah um it's very it's a very true recreation and representation of the time yeah the uh, two things the two quibbles is jackie wilson's voice is one of the finest things god ever made yeah and billy joel's is not that and since you recreated, because you're right, I, a lot of those songs in the 50s work, particularly say a Jackie Wilson tune works mm -hmm. because it just is like a train. It just drives and drives and drives and drives and drives. So it'd be fun to dance to or whatever. And there's a little, I don't, I guess you'd call it a bridge but, or a break, but there's a break in this song, uh, Easy Money, that wouldn't have existed in a Jackie Wilson song true and i feel like it's a mistake to have done it it's a very yeah it's, that's where it's a, it's billy joel again yes it turned into a billy joel song for a minute and yeah i think if uh there was a crowded dance floor full of uh, sock hoppers 
they might have all sort of stopped dancing and looked at the stage for a minute. <laughs> Wait, what? What, what happened? What we were. This? I can't dance to this part. Oh, yeah, it's back. Okay. Okay, and, now we're back too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. for sure. It's it um it also set me on a jag that I just listened to a bunch of Jackie Wilson. That you know, I I think Billy Joel would be cool with that. Yeah. Like, oh, good. That's what I was kind of hoping people would do is rediscover this the original good version of this stuff that i did yeah and i uh, did i just listened to hours of it and it's just fun like i i there's a thing that would happen a lot more in the 50s uh do you, like i was this song feels like it's almost an echo of lonely teardrops musically okay um obviously lyrically very different that's just this crazy love song but there's a thing in the fifties that they did a lot where there'd be a song about a guy who was like on the verge of suicide, just broken down. And it would be, ba, 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 ba. it would be the funnest <laughs> yeah. song. Yeah. And the lyrics are just, this guy's broken in two, but. Ba, 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 da, boo. Oh yeah. Uh, my favorite is, uh, what is it called? Last Kiss. Um I can't remember who it is. It's a one hit wonder. His name is like J. Frank Herbert or something. <laughs> uh, and it's it's basically about uh, a car accident. This young couple who's in love and they have a car accident and she dies. <laughs> but it's like, where oh, where can my baby, baby be? The Lord took her away from me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is this jams. Let me listen to it for a second. Oh, God. She's got to heaven and I've got to be good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh, it just didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And now here's the other part about that song that's so great is, okay, that's the topic. He don't just bring it up. He goes into the gruesome details as he's singing along. The crying tires, the busting glass. The painful, the, the painful scream, scream. <laughs> that I heard last. Oh, yes. That's right. But you can fucking dance to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's so true. It is that like 60s thing where you think, oh, someone showed up with like the typewritten lyrics and they went, ah, I like these lyrics, kid. Here, we got a song we can put them in. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mashed it together and like, get in the studio. All right, press them. <laughs> yeah. no, no art happened yeah absolutely. No vision. every song on an album sounded different and was about different shit <laughs> no cohesion <laughs> yeah or they were all vaguely about the same stuff but with yeah. no cohesion 17 year old girl that i love yeah okay. 17 Great. year old i'm 40 and recording my album <laughs> 17 was, I guess it's easy to sing or it flows nicely, but man, there's a lot of 17 year old girls in those songs. Yeah. And I, it, now I don't know for sure, but I know that age of consent laws have changed <laughs> and it, and I know in some places it is 17. I believe in New York, it's 17, right? I don't know. Now I here's probably, the only reason. I probably don't know. Yeah. Here's the only reason I know that it's not that I'm planning a vacation. Um, <laughs> It's that I had read a thing about um, Jerry Seinfeld. Ah, yes. And the brouhaha over him dating. And uh, somebody had come to his defense and said, well, first of all, and, and then I'm like, well, he's not really in trouble. So you don't need to defend him because it just makes you look weird. Well, you just happen to know <laughs> all the, the states and their various ages of consent. Yeah. That seems to be an important piece of information for you. <laughs> yeah. And speaking Even of it, you know, don't say you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you accidentally found out somehow, just put it away. A friend of mine recently uh, mentioned, he said, because I was talking about taking a vacation, I was thinking about going to Ireland. And then he goes, uh, You should go to Thailand. Thailand's great. He said, Thailand's <laughs> great. The food's amazing. He's, he said, everything's cheap. You can get a really nice hotel. He goes, yes, people are going to bother you about why you went. 
You just tell them you went for the food and a vacation. Not everybody there is a creep. <laughs> because apparently when he got back, he had gone with his wife. Okay. And they went to a nice <laughs> hotel. But when he got back, every time he went, yeah, I went to Thailand. Everybody went, oh, you went to Thailand. Oh, huh? uh, lady boys, huh? <laughs> uh, did, now, did he not know before he went that that might happen? Uh, he probably did not realize the part where people would bother him. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He pr I'm sure he knew that that's a thing people do, but he was like, yeah, but I'm married and I'm going and I, it's a cheap vacation. And <laughs> I find that kind of funny though. Portugal is pretty inexpensive as well. Yeah. Just saying. I guess if I went to Ireland and I got mad that people were like, oh, did you do a lot of drinking? I, but the answer is going to be yes. So <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a different, <laughs> yeah. different boat. <laughs> So uh -oh. did you do a lot of thing about car song, bombing? Huh? Did you do a lot of car bombing in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> no, not everybody does that. Not everybody. It's been years. <laughs> the other thing about this song that's kind of funny is that uh it was it's from an innocent man, but I thought it was written because I I didn't remember it was from this from an innocent man i thought it was actually written for the movie with rodney dangerfield easy money not true nope it was co-opted it, it was used for it and worked perfectly so weird because it doesn't work perfectly on that album <laughs> yeah it does seem weirdly out of place yeah um because i mean i guess because so much of the album is him doing frankie valley uh, and then suddenly he's doing, well, he says James Brown in yeah. interviews, which I guess there's a lot of the attempted, the the yelling. <laughs> sure. I don't know what you call those. The oohs and ahs and owls. Yeah. Owls, the owls. I can see him having been influenced by James Brown, but it just feels more like a Jackie Wilson to me. Oh, sure. And I mean... Those guys influenced each other, and it, yeah. it's, a, it's a, all a melange. And it might be a bias in my heart because I would like it if more people knew about Jackie Wilson because I loved Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson, great. Yeah. Yes. And James Brown, of course, also fantastic, but people know him. People seem to know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah Jackie, Jackie Wilson is one of the That's many artists from that era who died a little too soon. Some tragic thing happened. I yep. believe he got shot by the husband of a lady he was visiting. Oh boy. Yeah. For sex, I mean. For oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Not just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> just dropping off some groceries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I did not know that about him. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was dead. Yeah. I didn't know why. Uh <laughs> so um, let's start digging into these lyrics, which the lyrics aren't complicated, but there's a surprising lot of them, which is nice. They don't, it doesn't repeat a lot. True. Um, not directly. It kind of says the same thing with different words over and over again. Yeah, that's for sure. There's not a lot of message here. And this, you know, you could look at this as another one that's like upbeat, but it's really tragic in a lot of ways yeah it's, it's about an addiction yeah it's not a horrible addiction it's about anything but easy money um you know i think when people talk about gambling and easy money they're generally being ironic anyway yeah um but yeah he, he it's not going well for him <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh it makes sense for a Rodney Dangerfield movie. By the way, the other thing is, if you look at the poster for Easy Money, it's funny to me looking at the poster and going, every goddamn comedy from that era had the same more or less poster. Uh, trying, yeah, I'm going to look at it, but you know, I feel like every era ends up with that problem. Yeah, where they had to have spent $80 in photo effort to make it 
they didn't have the advertising budgets yeah uh, that's, yeah and that's true because back then with comedies too the expectation was it'll be kind of cool if we make a couple million dollars from this right and that'll be a success yeah well get rodney dangerfield because we know he's a cocaine addict <laughs> and he'll, he'll, he needs this money <laughs> and he'll do one take and then leave for a month uh <laughs> Yeah, that poster is the dumbest. Yeah, it's and it's and now they don't uh, really make comedy movies anymore. No, they don't. If they do, they're big tentpole versions that it feels like when you're done, you're like, well, it's kind of a comedy, but mm-hmm. really, but really, it, it's heart. It has a lot of heart. Yeah, they had heartless, good heartless comedies in the '80s where nobody yeah. learned anything. Yeah, just jokes. Yeah. Just jokes and mean things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, you don't have to talk all night. I'm a man who can't say no. You don't have to twist my arm. Just point me where you want to go. Um, as si- very simple lyrics, but uh, not ham fisted like we talk about it. Nope. Efficient. That's kind of good. In the, in the sense of what he's trying to do, because you certainly don't want this kind of a song from this era to be like, why did you turn those words around? Um, and But I think, I think this is just luck. Like he started to write the song and he went, oh, that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it is lyrically pretty true to the era. Yeah. Um, easy to sing, easy to remember, no big words. <laughs> And immediately a guy who has a problem. Yeah. Not only, hey, I like gambling and that'd be fun to do. It's like, no, you don't have to convince me to gamble. Yeah. Just tell me where I can go gamble. Yeah. <laughs> this guy already owes somebody money. So. Oh, for sure. So he's like, yeah, he's got to get there before uh, Boris finds him. Yeah. He's not trying to win money. He's trying to win money back. Yeah, oh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, he's trying to catch up before somebody beats the piss out of him or worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take me to the action. Take me to the track. Take me to a party if they're betting in the back. I've been working all my life. Can't afford to wait. Let me call my wife so I can (laughs) tell her I'll be late. He's not going to tell her why. Nope. He's going to lie to her about why he's late. I like this song. I like this lyric partly because I know for sure, number one, that if you met the guy who, the character in the song, he for sure smells like cologne and vodka. Yep. He's got a sport coat that looks nice at a distance. And then you get close and you realize he's been wearing that coat a couple days now. The liner's coming out a little. Yep, for sure. And he's got stuff crammed in his pocket. He's got bedding slips Mm -hmm. from, from, from races he lost a long time ago. (laughs) He's got a newspaper in his back pocket. Oh, that thing, yeah. As as simple as a song is, at least it's a clear picture, and I'm not wondering who Allie is. <laughs> I know who this guy is. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't care. He's not like a devotee of any specific form of gambling. <laughs> right. It's really about finding a way to get a hold of some money. Yeah. He's very mad that he has had to work his whole life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> been working all my life i can't afford to wait it's a cute turn of phrase yeah is this a guy so is this a guy who maybe wasn't gambling so much before but is having a midlife crisis or just realized this is a dead end for me i think he uh always gambled and lost and you know like stayed afloat yeah and something happened (laughs) he made a really big bet that went super poorly and now it's okay anywhere let's go 
the track. I, I'll go to a party, but only if there's gambling <laughs> in a different <laughs> room. I have to gamble and make some money and lie to my wife. And hopefully <laughs> I'll come home late and she'll be mad, but then I'll bust out a huge wad of cash and it'll be okay. Yeah. Otherwise I can't go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it bops. Yeah. Bops right along. I want the easy, easy, easy money. I could get lucky. Things could go right. I like this because for sure they just haven't. Oh, yeah. And I they want won't. The easy, easy money. Maybe this one time. See, even more so. Maybe <laughs> this one time it'll work. Yeah, maybe tonight. And No. <laughs> no, it's not going to be tonight. Yeah, the only way you're lucky is... You d you didn't get murdered tonight. <laughs> count yourself lucky on that count. Yep, and hopefully your wife will be there when you get back. <laughs> um, hopefully for her, she isn't. <laughs> right. You don't have to try too hard. I don't need a song and dance. I don't need an invitation if you've got a game of chance. <laughs> Again. Um, not only do I want to gamble, stop telling, yeah, don't, you don't have to convince me. And also I would bet that no one's trying to convince him. Yeah. <laughs> He's, you know, the guy in your group of friends who's like, guys, uh, you don't have to talk me into it. I'll go to the strip club. <laughs> They're like nobody said, <laughs> nobody said strip club. What are you talking about? Fine. I let's go then. All right, who else said that? <laughs> I, know sure, it. I know. So it's me for sure. Jim says yes. <laughs> Paul's on the fence. That's two against one. <laughs> I'm like, what? Wait, I didn't. Yeah, none of us I, brought I'll this. Get a cab. Let's talk about it in the cab. <laughs> we said coffee shop. <laughs> There's coffee right across the street. We get coffee before we go in. That way, it will be uh, it will be charged up. The girls years like ago, that. Years ago, my friend, <laughs> our friend Tim, one time was we were talking about some strip club, and he goes, "The wings there are actually pretty good." <laughs> <laughs> Not going there for who's wings. that for? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I really love hot wings. The ladies, fine. Yeah, there are ladies there. Right, God, but the wings. <laughs> it's the only I don't want to see boobs, it's but I need my good wings. Yeah. I can't they got, go wild wings. They got blue cheese. Okay, they have those other places. <laughs> no, 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 but you don't get it though. See, they the buffalo sauce. They put it on the wings. Oh, right on there. Okay, I guess. <laughs> it's it's I, Thailand all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also like the um I don't need an invitation because now I'm like, the people he's talking to probably have actively said, yeah, there's gambling. You shouldn't go. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't need an invitation. No, you need, you need the uh, password that we're not going to get you. <laughs> you don't need an invitation. You need a meeting. You need to go to a meeting. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. You need to do your steps. <laughs> work the program take me to the tables take me to the fights run me like the numbers roll me like the dice pretty yep pretty for singing yep it's i again i i forgot about this song and it's better than i remember i'm still not sure how good i think it is well, I, yeah, I don't know how good it is either. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of um, Holiday Road from uh -huh. the Vacation movies. Yep. And when yeah. I hear that song, it's it's enjoyable just because it's got a nice sound. But it's not like I'm all I'm gonna go. I gotta go really listen to Holiday Road. <laughs> right. And this is like that. This is a there's no it's, sense of like, what am I missing? Yeah. Like, no, it's right there. 
I think I don't know if I think what's hurting my enjoyment of it a little is maybe some excess wokeness where I mean if you listen to him sing it he's really trying to sound like James Brown in a borderline offensive way oh okay um which you know is a thread with him but it's you know I, it's not done with malice I don't think he's, uh, he obviously has a great love for James Brown and Ray Charles and <laughs> He really wants to sound like that. And, and you know, this is a problem throughout his catalog is he doesn't particularly sound like anyone. And it, it's often him adopting a little voice. Sure. Uh, we talked about him running on ice where he's just like, I'll just sound like Sting. I'm like, why don't you just drop it an octave and sing it as yourself as an homage? There's some, there, I guess it's the difference between like doing an homage and doing a caricature. Yeah. And he's like, it's, this one wanders into caricature territory. It's almost like he should have written it and went, oh, this is great. I'll give it to a, a black artist who can <laughs> really make it uh, special. Right, really embody what I'm trying to do. Okay, that's, that's it's a weird political area in music, anyway. Um, I think about you know Justin Timberlake, and like, is he trying to sound like a black guy singing? Does he just sing like that? At what point are those different things? Yeah. Uh, Lily Allen has this song called It's Hard Out Here for a Bitch. You heard that song? I've not heard that song. And it's uh, the lyrics are fairly progressive as far as just um, what it struggles women go through. But if you watch the video and you listen to it, she's definitely borrowing a lot of the experience of Black women. Uh. And I don't think she's doing like I don't like you said. I don't think she's doing it with malice, but I guess what I'm saying is I see what you're saying because it is very pervasive, you know. Yeah, it's like twerking's great, and then people are twerking, and you're like, so why are you doing it? Right. It's yeah. You know, I mean, it's a, I'm not saying shame on him. I'm saying it's a weird area. Yeah. And. Uh, there's certainly a variety of things. I've worked with Justin Timberlake a few times, um, not on music, obviously. Um, but, you know, you listen to his music and you're like, oh, it's very black. <laughs> it's like a lot of the, uh, he sounds like a black artist sometimes, but then you work with him and he's been in the music industry since he was what, 14? Sure. And, Everyone around him is black. And he, you know, he talks that way. He sounds black. So what he, I guess, so So what he sounds like is he sounds like his it's culture. legitimately him. Yeah. You know, I guess it's like Eminem, <laughs> who yeah. grew up in an all black neighborhood, went to an all black school. And so it's like, is he talking black as it were? Or is, is that, I don't know what I'm getting at. No, I get what you're saying. There's a difference between affecting it and, and it being your culture. Yeah. And using it versus being it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I have no conclusion to any of these thoughts. Yeah. Um, I, the, or, other than I will just say, yeah, to, I'm safe. yeah, to Billy Joel's credit, I think it's done with, absolute love yes absolutely i mean it can be wildly misguided and still be done with love yeah yeah it's not I, being done to mock it's not no it's not mike huckabee doing the song he's obviously not trying to steal motown because motown had been over for 10 years when yeah. this song came out so it's yeah and even if even if motown were still around i think it would be objectively a, seen as an homage because if Motown were still killing it at that time they would have moved on anyway because they would have been doing yeah. 
Wonder. And and you can take the argument to its logical conclusion and basically say that any white person doing rock and roll is stealing from black culture. Sure. Because the whole <laughs> art was lifted. I don't know. From blues and you know blues and uh, and the and the first rock and roll. Yeah. And the whole jazz world. And then you could also say the other thing that I, this is, tends to be what I think. Well, our art has always been a progress of people who were influenced. So, yeah, it's really I, less important that the art was like borrowed <clears throat> and more important that the business of it was stolen. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, people should have got paid. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's that's true. Just the artists themselves, though, just a guy, I like this, I'd like to also do this, is yeah. probably okay. Yeah, I mean, it's the way art works. <laughs> yeah. And forever. I mean, it's comedy. We're both in comedy. That's how that works. You and borrow it, you change it a little. Yeah. You know. And, and you should you certainly wouldn't want art to be like, oh, you can't do this, and then you can't do this, because then new art would not happen. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. You can't, not every artist can't create everything from complete scratch. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to read this next lyric, because I actually love this next lyric. Uh, when you're counting on a killing, always count me in. Talk me into losing just as long as I can win. I like that lyric. Yeah, really great. These are great lyrics, less for reading and analyzing, which we've chosen to do. <laughs> for singing, they're great. Yeah. I like the, like, talk me into losing as long as I can win. There's a little bit of self-awareness. <laughs> yeah. In that, where he's like, ah. Ah, I lost again. All right, all right. But I could win, right? Could win. I mean, I quite literally am going to have poker night tonight on on a different Zoom, and I know that I will lose all the money I put in. Um, but you win some hands, and it is great little dopamine bursts when you yeah. win a hand, and you're like, yeah, that's that's the win. These yeah. little. Uh, Bursts of dopamine and a little socialization, and you know, then I lose forty bucks. Fine. I went on a, uh, I went on a gambling cruise because in Chicago you had the boats, the river boats. Right. right, right, right. Because you couldn't gamble on dry land, but for some reason you could gamble on a boat. I don't know <laughs> yeah. why that's allowed. Can't imagine. But the whole idea was they'd take you out for a couple hours and just go around and then come back. And I remember one time getting on this damn boat you had to pay to get on the boat and then you start gambling and the it was like four hours on a dumb boat and <laughs> i went to the blackjack table and i lost all of my money in like 20 minutes yeah <laughs> and then i was on a fucking boat for <laughs> four hours that's the fucking genius of those things yeah if you have enough money <laughs> I'm sure they have an ATM on the boat. Yeah, yeah. I would have just needed an ATM card hooked up to money. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. I used to go to uh, Puerto Rico for vacations and stay at the very nice Ritz, and it had a casino inside of it. So you <laughs> could leave the casino. But then your choice was your room or sit by the dark pool. <laughs> um, you couldn't go on the beach after dark. They locked the back gates so you couldn't go out and sit on the beach and look at the moon. So you would just go, well, fuck, I'm here. And there's an ATM. <laughs> so, yeah, you were, it was a, a land boat. I was oh. trapped on a land boat. And why wouldn't they let you on the beach? They said for safety reasons. I think don't know what that means. I know that area had like 
these weird packs of dogs <laughs> that would wander around. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, there was some crime, I guess. I'm, I'm sure some like white lady got mugged 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, like, Put up a fence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Um, or you could drown and sue them. Yeah. Or, you know, I guess your family would sue them. Somebody could you sue would, them. Yeah. You're dead. Um, half, half feels like the main motivation is, hey, get in there and start gambling. <laughs> The thing of it is, if you have no money, gambling is joyless because it's so terrifying that you will lose this money. Yeah. And if you're lucky enough to have a good amount of money, then gambling is no fun because, you know, I might go to that casino and win like a hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. I will buy most of lunch here at the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to put down you know they had like pretty low limits and stuff obviously they weren't trying to hand back a lot of money so you're like well who's gambling fun for i guess if you have insane amounts of money yeah gamble slightly less insane amounts but even then like what why would a billionaire play roulette you won life i have a friend my friend brian and for a good five or six years of his life, he was a professional gambler. Wow. He does not have another job and he is not rich. So hmm. he was, I think, I think they call them grinders. Okay. I've heard that term used. So he had a little bit of money and he did like to gamble, but there were times when he, he just go, well, I got to go. And you realize, oh, he's got to go because he's got to make money. And he would have to stay for, you know, 12 hours or whatever and just get to a point where he'd made enough money to call it a day. Joyless. Yeah. And his system was he did well back when people first got enamored with poker and didn't uh-huh. know what they were doing. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. And then he, he told me, he said after about the sixth year, he was like, yeah, and then what happened is people started to know what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, some people wrote some books. Yep. And there were those uh, TV shows where you, remember poker tournaments were on TV all the time? Oh, yeah. And yeah, everybody kind of learned it. And eventually <laughs> he, uh, eventually just, and he had one bad experience where, he was at a place that got busted. Oh no. And there were dogs and cops and rifles. Wow. And oh, and that funny. experience, he went, ah, just go get a job. Because <laughs> he had done nothing wrong, but there were dogs and rifles pointed in his direction. Yeah. Yeah. And and sounds like he was already basically working a job and like i'll just get one where there's no danger yeah and where the money is maybe not as much as i could imagine i might win but it's at least absolute yes it's like yes i make this money i won my paycheck yeah how much of my paycheck did i get oh i got all of it i got all of it uh okay i'm out yeah (laughs) And I'm doing eight hours and I'm going the fuck home. Oh, All right, I think you're up for the next. Uh... Back to the little uh, chorus. I want the easy, easy money. I want the good times. Oh, I never had. I want the easy, easy money. Oh, I want the good life. I want it bad. It's a lot of uh, those great super simple lyrical tricks. I want the good life. I want it bad. Um, Really nicely done. Yeah. And you're right. There are a lot of lyrics. And (laughs) he's a damn sad sack. I want the good times I never had. He's definitely whiny. (laughs) Yeah. You're married. Your wife is going to hear this song. (laughs) All right, you do the next lyric, but just to say that this is where the tempo changes. 
Ah, uh, yeah, this is where it gets uh, contemplative. Yeah, and in I that visual way. And I don't. And now that you've imagined people dancing, I'm like, exactly. That's why this doesn't work in this kind of song. Right. He, uh, yeah, he does these impressions, but he can't help but be himself. Yeah. Easy money. You say I fool myself, but better me than being a fool for someone else. I got a hot slot machine of a system. <laughs> to go. That to me, I, I just think of George Thorogood. Yeah. It's that kind of like, oh boy. Yeah, why is it suddenly a sex thing? Because that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Easy money. I got a one track mind and a good reputation laying on the line. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. I'll either come back a bum or a king. Baby, I don't know. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Bum. You're a bum. Yeah. You're not coming back a king. <laughs> not coming back king. Um, Again, it's all so singable. Yeah. It's, you know, it is not great writing, and yet it is because it is exactly what the music needs and exactly what the song needs and exactly what his voice needs. There's not that thing you hear in a lot of songs where there's like, oh, there's a, too many syllables in this line. Yeah, but left it like that anyway, or you know the alley problem. <laughs> yeah, where you have to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable to make it fit. <laughs> this one is all like right in the slot. Yeah, you can sing, you can put your whole voice in it, and not worry that you're gonna trip. Yeah, you uh, you mentioned this in another episode um, where you know when like well uh, running on ice uh where you decided to do this thing where you pretended you were somebody else and you suddenly did a really good job with those lyrics because you put these constraints on yourself this is very right. similar yes yeah these are uh much easier constraints to meet yeah but yeah it's exactly what it needs to be which is, you know, that's what good writing, when you're a young writer, you think like, oh, I'll use a lot of big words and that's what good writing is. And then you slowly whittle away at that and learn that it's just writing exactly what needs to be there. Yeah. This is just what it needs. Yeah. It needs easy words to sing. It needs to rhyme like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you... it needs super simple metaphors that anyone can understand. And it's yeah. all there. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's that at the end of the day, the guy who was reading it, if he understood it, you did a good job. Yeah. Or, or hearing it, yeah. And your big words didn't yeah. help if no one gets what the F you're doing. Yeah. You don't get to the end of this song and go, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's exactly what it's about. <laughs> it's about the easy money. Uh, so he does that little thing where the music changes. Luckily, that's not too long. It's just yeah. a little, it's like if you're on a road and there's just a little dip where you had to slow down and then everything's fine again. <laughs> and you're like, oh, good, okay. Yeah, I think I, well, did I, I, did the I county bottom out? No. You don't have to start <laughs> no. a fire. I'm a man who can't say no. If you've got a little risky business, just point me where you want to go. <laughs> so I wonder, was there an argument or was there a debate? Like, is Easy Money going to take this song or Risky Business? Who's taking this song? <laughs> Let's just, uh, you know, we'll hedge our bets. Yeah. Put yeah. some more movie we'll titles in. Hedge our bets. Huh? Oh, hedge our bets. Good job. Huh? Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have to break this club. Little... <laughs> like, oh, this could be anything. <laughs> You've got a Terminator too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to the this this I like. Take me to the power. Take me to the heat. Take me to the cleaners if it's open to the street. Yeah. 
great. Yeah. The power, the heat. It is very much, he knows he's not going to win. Yeah. He just gets off on being in it. And isn't it nice, by the way, that Take Me to the Power and Take Me to the Heat are in the song now as opposed to early. It's a good structure because it's, for what it is, it's a nice build because now, now he's desperate. <laughs> yeah. Take me to the, yeah, take me to the cleaners. As long as it's open. Also, take me to the heat. Heat, couldn't the movie Heat could have used this song. Oh, yeah. I wish all of them had <laughs> used the same song. Uh, Hollywood's big got, controversy this year. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I missed it. Go ahead. Say your thing. Oh, I was just saying the big controversy in Hollywood this year. <laughs> three different movies. You sing Billy Joel song. <laughs> <laughs> something's got to pay off. Something's got to break. Someone's got a fortune that they're begging me to take. See, the desperation is building in this guy. That's pretty great. It's great. I think 30 seconds after this song is over, our character gets shot in the head. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he wins the, the big. <laughs> no. No, he just gets pushed out into the alley. Yeah, because he's go because he's running around town. I think your early theory was makes so much sense. He's running around. Come on. I need a game. And he's got to he's trying to make whatever money he has. It isn't enough to cover his debts and <laughs> right. to satisfy his wife. Right. I bet he but has kids. got a fortune. Yeah. Someone's fortune that they're begging me to take. I'll find him. Yeah. So the other thing is he's kind of looking for a mark now. He's not just wants to gamble. <laughs> he wants a mark because he's like, damn it. I got to get some cash. This is like right before you rob a liquor store. <laughs> like I'm, I'm tired of taking any risk gonna get with the guaranteed easy money is fine i need guaranteed money <laughs> yeah that's oh. great all right it's you i want think. the easy back to the easy easy money i could get lucky things could go right oh i want the easy easy money maybe just this time oh maybe tonight he knows better yeah it's Easy money. I don't want no hard cash. I just want the easy money. It is like 1983, this album came out. Yeah. These are 60s lyrics. This is like the level of wordplay that people could handle in the 60s. Yeah. I don't want hard cash. I want easy money. Yeah. Oh, and that, he's so clever. How does he do it? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the... And then, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, this is definitely a song in the 60s that was written by a committee or by a guy who cranks out three yeah. minute songs. Yeah, who now would just have an app that could do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, just put in what your, your song is about and then a genre. Yeah. Uh, these are the, this is the level of metaphor the algorithm can hand you. Um, now I'm looking at the lyrics and it just has easy money in parentheses and then gotta, 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 gotta. <laughs> yeah. Which I think really <laughs> is a nice uh, thesis sentence. Yeah. For the desperation that's going on with this guy. It's not want to. Yeah. Or I enjoy that. Got to. It's a desperate need. What also is better to sing than wanna. Yeah. <laughs> got to, got to, got to. Yeah. And there you go. What that is another is... song? There's another song that has a bunch of gattas in. Got to, got to, got to. There's probably several. Yeah. But a Billy Joel one you're trying to think of. No, I'm thinking the from that era. Oh, um, 
that. Uh, feels stonesy. Yeah. But it is just another little move that puts it solidly in that era. And I and like so, to. I like a song to have a proper ending, but it's right for this era to have it just fade out. Yeah. This is a yeah radio. You heard songs on the radio, and that's all. That's where they lived. Yeah. And, and they had to fade out so they could tell you the weather. Yep. And I prefer, like, I prefer that you did the work and gave me an ending. But if he did that here, that would be the wrong thing to do. I always wondered, like, who's in charge of that? Because those are two starkly different uh, ways to end a song. Yeah. And did like radio create the fade out for their own purposes? Did they code? Do you go to like your producer and like, here's this song and it ends real hard? And they went, you know what? Put a fade out in it so it'll yeah. get some radio play. Now, I wonder. That's a good question. Again, Mike. I'm not a music expert, clearly. Let me ask you this question because I can't, I'm not sure, but. I think songs from the 40s, like big band songs, always had a proper ending, right? They didn't do the fade out, did they? I don't think so. Yeah, no, I think they always had to land. Yeah. Because that, you played those in a ballroom. Yeah. And people had to applaud you. So I mean, this is a, it's a modern part of, I guess, pop music does this. I think so. Yeah. Do yeah, newer songs do it? Do newer songs still do the fade out? Uh, no, I think now the, you know, I gotta say I'm, I'm super out of the loop, but my bet is that now the stations fade the end of the song or there are hardly any radio stations and you listen to stuff on Spotify. Right. And it's sometimes We'll blur it into the next song before it ends anyway. Yeah, you're getting you're getting it delivered to you a different way. Yeah. Yeah. I just wonder how much the delivery system impacts the writing and producing styles. I bet it does. I heard yeah. him uh, I was reading a little piece of an interview with him earlier today, and he talked about uh, nylon curtain. And he said, the Nylon Curtain was the first time I played the studio as an instrument, which I thought was a really interesting thing to say, I like to use the all the soundboard tricks uh, and all the electronica that he could get his hands on. And he's like, oh, I started to think of everything in the studio as one instrument that could make everything sound a little different or a little richer. That oh, cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's not a, a fresh thought, but it was interesting to me. Coming from him, coming from a piano guy. Yeah. So you'd be like, oh, I will, I will use weird <laughs> tricks and echoes and sound effects. That, that arc of being a guy who played live, and it makes sense because that same arc, by the way, the Beatles is the perennial right. example of that. They were... A, uh, an amazing live band that's why they got famous initially and then they evolved into doing certain things that i don't think you could do live yes um yeah that big final chord that lasts for 30 seconds yeah <laughs> um they often say they say they had to turn up the microphone so loud or so high that you can hear the air conditioner in the room on the track <laughs> To get the whole chord. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Funny. Um, I also really like Beach Boys, uh, Barbara Ann. Oh, yeah. You can hear them. He's like playing and he's like pounding the table with an ashtray yeah. <laughs> as, as part of it. And then you hear somebody go, play that ashtray, Carl. Um, <laughs> they're just like, yeah, just use everything. Yeah. You know, fantastic, but obviously this song predates all that. This is very studio controlled. It's interesting too, because I think that only works if you were a good live musician for that 
discovery to happen. Like there's yeah. a ton of artists who, huh? To even think of that, you have yeah. to be. There's a ton of artists who are just, uh, the studio is all they do, but that's because they're terrible. <laughs> right. And the studio is where they hide a multitude of sins as opposed to a legitimate artist, like a guy like Billy Joel, who actually put in the hours, the thousands and thousands of hours. Well, then, like we've talked about with writing, with people who want to break the rules, it's fine as long as you're not that dumb young kid who doesn't know them yet. Yes. You have to be able to draw a person before you become a cubist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's a really good example of like, okay, I can do this thing with echo and whatever, but as long as before that you knew how to sing, you knew how to <laughs> play something and you knew why musically it was a aesthetically pleasing thing to hear you had a right. fundamental grounding in what made it make sense yeah if you're riffing on something you have to be able to do the thing you're riffing on yeah otherwise you're just blowing in the wind yeah so i like yeah. this kids today <laughs> stupid kids uh yeah i think uh, i think it, this i like the song it's a song made with love and it's a song, it's not, it's not a song that will show up on my playlist often. It's wildly forgettable, yeah. evidenced by the fact that I wasn't sure you had the title right <laughs> last week. Yeah. And you're like, easy money. It's like, is that a Billy Joel song? <laughs> and it, oh yeah, yeah, there it is. It's really, yeah, it's, I think forgettable because it's done so nicely. Yeah. You know, there's no nothing that sticks out. And you're just like, yep, that sounds like a, a Motown song. Yeah. Good job. It also felt to me like it could have been, oh, I need one more song for this album. It feels that way too. It really does feel that way. But it, I mean, even for that, it's the work was put in. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly yeah. listenable. And when I thought about it, I actually remembered it. It brought me back to a place, which is good. You know, as far as remembering when I first heard it, I was like, oh, yeah. Immediately thought about the Rodney Dangerfield movie. Because at that age, I was in the cycle of I'd go see any new comedy when it was around because I wanted to go see comedies. Yeah. And yeah. Rodney, Danger Rodney Dangerfield, of course, who didn't fucking love Rodney Dangerfield? It's the best. I love it. Had that little part in Caddyshack and then parlayed it into like nine movies. <laughs> yep. A little That's bit our... of trivia about uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. He actually got plenty of respect. People oh, like boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the irony. Are <laughs> right, you so got some trivia so for me? Like 80. Um, I do. Oh, good. And I didn't know this until I was poking around earlier. Um, Billy Joel did a voice uh, for a Disney movie. Do you know the movie and who he voiced? Whoa. Okay. I didn't, I had no idea this was true. And I might have to watch the movie now. Is it, is it one you haven't actually watched? It's one I have not watched that I knew existed Okay. It's definitely a lesser work. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, then that eliminates my initial guess. All right. It must have been a musical. Otherwise, why? Yeah. Uh, Lilo and Stitch? <laughs> he was <laughs> Lilo? No. It was pretty, might be pretty Lilo. It was Oliver and Company. Oh, yes. And you know what? I did know he was in that. I just forget. There's a forgettable. Awesome. That's yeah. good trivia. Who was he? Dodger. He was Dodger. Okay. The Artful Dodger. Yes. Yeah, major role. Was it cartoon and they were, it was Oliver, but with dogs or something? My cats, I think. Okay. Or <sighs> both, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Uh, God bless. A uh, shout out to sporkle.com. Fantastic <laughs> trivia website. 
Oh, Oliver and Company. Wow. Yeah. I Have you that. ever done uh, a Sporkle quiz? No. Treat yourself. They right. have one. They're all timed trivia quizzes. Um, there is a Billy Joel trivia, and you know, there's also one that is just name all the things in "We Didn't Start the Fire." <laughs> so you just sit there and type everything you can think of, and you can't believe how you you can't get close to all of them. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of you damn think things you in know that. Them. I mean, it gives you like 10 minutes. Wow. Um, but yeah, you never can come up with all of them. But yeah, Sporkle's fucking great. That's awesome. Hey, uh, we used it to kill time. We were writing. <laughs> hey, side note, uh, yeah. just an observation. Isn't comedy much more joyful now? It is. It is. I don't, I'm not convinced that the world is any better. Um, but it is so nice to get the setups for the monologue and see like other names. Yep. Smaller stories, celebrities are being talked about again. <laughs> it's great. And you know that you're not going to have to talk about Biden nonstop. Right. He's just not going to give you enough stuff to talk about. And also the audience isn't paying that much attention to him, so they won't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. There will be times when they are. I saw but right I, now. I, yeah, I watched Seth's it's monologue. A delight. It might have been from last night and was just there was a joke about the most silly, dumb news story. And it was like, oh yeah, well, you remember I used to do this. And there'd be some little thing that the point was, isn't this funny that this is a story? And now here's the joke. Not democracy's on fire. Here's a joke. I thought about democracy being on fire. Right. Yeah. It's a nice break after four years straight. Ugh. Really five. Yeah. Lord. So, um, uh, so there's the whole time there's been these ladies behind you. Yep. And they're looking down. I don't. I'm. Have said, don't recognize these ladies. I feel like this is a TV show from pretty recent times. Yes. Based on eyebrow skills. It's they're, not. Um, they're youngish, of course. Um, uh, that's not necessarily that important, necessarily, but I would say they're attractive. Sure. Sure. They're like pretty young things. They what are pretty. That? What is that? Pretty little liars? Is that what they are? They are pretty little liars. And and uh, I don't know anything about that show. But they are pretty little liars. That's true. <laughs> so they won't tell you the truth. No, they do. Yeah. Do you need them to do that? I do require some honesty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need some pretty pretty Woo. face. To tell me pretty lies. pretty lies. Nice job. That was pretty good, <laughs> right? That. that was great. Yeah. That was great. That's exactly what that game should be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week, um, every time I've seen Billy Joel in concert, he has played this song. I don't know why. It's pretty good. He loves it. Summer Highland Falls. Awesome. I want, I kind of want to get down to uh, the bottom of why does he love it so much? Yeah, it's there's good. a there's a live version that pops up in Spotify. I don't know if it's the only version, but it's a live one. He go no. There's got to be multiple versions. He go. He, he introduces it by saying, "This next song was in no way a hit. It was his introduction. <laughs> um, yeah, it's off of Turnstiles, right? Yeah, and songs in the attic, which is probably the version you're hearing. Yeah, and he goes, and then he goes. This is for all you manic depressives out there. He says, <laughs> "Great." 
Great. which might be a clue when we get into it as to what appeals you know if you know if it's uh if it speaks to a way that he often feels so that'd be interesting to look at because who knows maybe yeah. it's one of his most personal songs it, it could be that it seems like that would be the case yeah and that makes Great. it a good good one to dive into uh uh so yeah excellent choice nice job everybody i hope you had fun <laughs> we all had fun uh give it up for the pretty little liars the liars I think that show, oh by God. the way, is they kill somebody and they've got a secret to keep, is what I think yeah. the show's about. Yeah, they, they do look like they're looking down at a corpse. Yeah, I think that's and actually the, they've killed you from yeah. my point of view. Yeah, which, <laughs> they're not wrong. They're not wrong to do it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's time. All right, let's do this again next week. And uh, good night, everybody. <laughs>